So we've been introduced to the bell curve in the previous video and seen how it is divided up into its standard deviations. In this video, I want to introduce you a little bit more to the normal distribution. I want to show you how we can compare two distributions and really where we're going with this. Okay, What uh, types of problem are we going to meet? So let's say um, I've got two populations of two different uh, species of tree. And one I'm going to call x, and they are normally distributed with a mean height of 10 meters, say. And the standard deviation is 1 meter. Variance is 1 squared. And the second population, uh, y, has a mean height of 12 metres uh, and a standard deviation of 1.5 metres, uh, variance of 1.5 squared. So let's say I wanted to draw a diagram that would show both of these uh, normal distributions on the same diagram so we can compare them. Okay. So really what I want to do is I want to draw out a number line and then try and draw these straight on. Okay, so let's start with a number line. Okay, now we know that 99.7% of the data will be within three standard deviations of the mean. So the lowest point for this x distribution will be three standard deviations down from 10, so that would be at 7. And then three standard deviations above, I would be at 13. For y, three standard deviations down is 4.5 down. So 12 take away 4.5 gets me to 7.5. And then 4.5 above gets me to 16.5. Okay, so that's just a guide, rough guide, uh, so that I can see kind of where I need to be with this. So if I... Um, Put in my first point as 6, then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, need to go a little bit further, 16, 17, that'll do, okay? So, um, the first curve, um, x, uh, between 7 and 13, it's mean is at 10. Okay, so mean is at 10. And it's going to be within, the majority is going to be within three standard deviations. So let's colour this one red. We'll go with X is red. Okay, so really the majority is going to be between 7 and 13. Okay, now this curve does go on forever and ever and ever in both directions, getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, okay? But the majority is within that three standard deviations of the mean, symmetrical about the mean. Right, now, as for my second normal distribution, y, it has its mean at 12, okay? Now, one thing we've got to consider is, are they both the same height? So let me... Let's think about that for a moment. Are they both the same height? Well, remember that the area of the normal distribution uh, is 1. Okay, And um, if that's the case then this one is going to have to be wider than that one because it's got a larger standard deviation. It's more spread out. And because it's more spread out, it's going to have to be shorter. OK? So it's going to have to be a little bit shorter. Now, how much shorter? That, I mean, if you were asked to sketch these, OK, you're not going to be down to the finer points of having to sketch it precisely to uh, the correct height. But um, if you were to find the correct height, you can do that in one of two different ways. One way would be to use the formula. This is the formula for the equation of the normal distribution. 
this horrific looking thing has uh, both the mean mu involved sigma the standard deviation it's got pi it's got e okay it's got everything in there um, but that's the equation of the curve and you could substitute all that information in um, at the mean value okay so if you let x be the mean value then it will tell you the height of the curve your calculator can actually do that as well okay so when you go onto your calculator your class whiz you go to menu and then you go to number seven for distribution if you go to normal PD the first option you see there okay if you type in the X as the mean value so let's go with 10 okay the Sigma is the standard deviation which is 1 and the mean is 10 also Okay, and we get 0.3989 is the highest point. Now, as for y, okay, then if we do the same thing, then we put in the mean value as the x, the sigma is 1.5, and the mean is 12. And we get 0.3989. 26596, etc. So actually, it's just over halfway, isn't it? Okay, of the height. So you can actually compare the two heights of the normal distributions using normal PD. There's not a lot of other uses for normal PD, as we will find. Okay, the majority of cases that we use, we use normal CD. Okay, which we will get onto very shortly. So Okay, so it's a little bit higher than halfway up. So um, it has a standard deviation of 1.5. So we're going to be 4.5 down. So one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. So down to here, right? So the majority of the data is from here. And then all the way along to 16.5. Okay, but this curve does keep on going in both directions. Okay, but there you can see how these two normal distributions compare. So we've got uh, the green curve uh, having a larger mean, but is also got a larger standard deviation, is so more spread out. Whereas the red curve has a smaller mean, so it's shifted to the left and a smaller standard deviation which squashes it and hence pushes it upwards, okay? So the smaller the standard deviation, the taller it will be, the taller its frequency density, because that's how this is measured, okay? It's, it's frequency density that we're considering with those two values there, okay? So, all right, now, what can we do with these? Well, our main job um, with normal distribution curves and normal distribution problems is to find probabilities in certain ranges. So to find the probability, for example, of this curve, uh, what is the probability of selecting um, a tree at random that is taller than 10.5 metres, for example? Or for this curve, uh, what's the probability of selecting a tree that is less than 11 metres? And our job, therefore, would be to find out particular areas of the curve. Because the probability is given by the area of the curve, we need to calculate those areas. Now, you might then be thinking, right, well, I've got a curve, I know its equation, so maybe I can integrate it. Can I integrate uh, this function to evaluate the area between two values. It seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. The only problem is that this uh, function has a problem. Um, it's, the e, it's the fact that you've got an e to the minus half x squared involved. Okay, This e to the minus x squared actually, uh, by definition and by... Uh, definition of what the integral is, uh, it integrates to something called the error function. 
Now, the error function is certainly beyond our pay grade at this point, okay? And you can certainly look it up on Wikipedia or another mass website and uh, see for yourself what it's all about. The problem with the error function is um, that in order to evaluate the error function, you've got to uh, use uh, a numerical method, a summation, in order to do it. So it's not really um, something that is very, really, very easy to use. So this is not something that we will be doing. We are not going to be integrating this. And integrating it can, therefore, be quite a messy process. So how is it made easier for us? Well, Historically, okay, um, historically, what happened was that we would instead of uh, looking at these two curves independently, it, we would instead transform them using a formula. And the formula that is used is z equals x minus mu, oh, don't know why I wrote mu, mu over sigma. OK, we use this formula, OK, because um, if I was to try and find areas for um, any curve with any mean and any standard deviation, what I would need is a table of results for every single normal distribution, for every single mean and every sta single standard deviation. And you can imagine, well, that's, there's an infinite amount of those. So I don't want to have to deal with an infinite amount of tables or approximations. Okay? So what I instead do is I transform these two curves using this transformation. Now, what that does is we have this x take away mu in there. And what that's going to do is it's going to translate the curve um, backwards or forwards along the x-axis. And this dividing by sigma will stretch the curve down. So it'll either stretch it that way or stretch it that way, depending. And it transforms all of these curves to what we refer to as the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a specific distribution that has mean 0 and standard deviation 1. And we say z is normally distributed with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. Now, the reason why we would do that is because all of the areas, well, the majority of the areas that we needed, and this is historically, right, we would use statistical tables okay oh, I'm not on the right page there we would use statistical tables that look like this and then we would be able to find areas of that of this curve using these tables so we would transform all of these problems into the standard normal find out the errors from that curve instead okay so that's the idea. All of these curves would get translated along back to zero as the mean and then stretched so that it would have a standard deviation of one so it fit this curve perfectly. So that this area would correspond directly to an area in this curve instead and then I could use the tables. Now, the situation that we are currently in um, is that you have a calculator, the class whiz, that is able to calculate normal probabilities straight off the bat without using the tables. So you are able, using the normal CD function, and I'll show you how to use it in the next video, you're able to type in the mean, the standard deviation, and then um, the x value that you want it to be less than, for example. Okay, you can type all of that in and it will give you the probability immediately. And these questions in the exam will be like one markers.
because you're just putting the, for, the stuff into the calculator to get an answer. So the actual number of marks here is very limited. However, the, you're not totally reliant on that calculator, though. And the problem is that the problems that we face later on down the line um, involve going backwards. OK, so if I give you the probability, can you find the x value? Uh, they involve um, simultaneous equations, for example. And subsequently, you need to know this formula. You are not given it. You need to know it. And so what I'm going to do in the next video when we're looking at finding these probabilities, I'm going to show you how to use that formula, but also how to get the, que the answer directly on the calculator. But you cannot rely just on this first section knowing how to use the calculator. You need to get familiar with this formula so that you're able to tackle the more challenging problems later on down the line.